In this video, let's talk about how to reduce taxes in Australia, especially the taxes you have to pay when investing in stocks. Now, full disclosure, because I earn majority of my income by my company, I actually work with a tax accountant on both my company tax return and my own tax return. At the same time, I prepare a lot of the information that I'm going to talk about in this video for her to process. So I'm going to take you along the journey and I am going to talk about the tax implication first when it comes to investing in stocks in Australia. And then I'll finish off the video with broader ways that you can use to minimize the amount of taxes you have to pay. Now it's important to acknowledge that this video is not intended to be financial advice or taxation advice, but just purely entertainment purposes. So if you need professional advice like I do from time to time, make sure you talk to a proper taxation professional. As usual, if you find this video helpful, just gently smash that like button right there and that's more than enough to support me. So without further ado, let's go. Look, taxes isn't exactly exciting. I'm gonna try and make this fun and I'm gonna try and make this very simple. So let's start with the tax implications when investing in stocks in Australia first. And then I'll talk about the tax implications of an Australian investing in US stocks and dividends. There are two main things you need to know. There is capital gains tax and then there is franking credits. I'm gonna start with capital gains tax first. And for sanity's sake, we're gonna use Otto as an example and he only buys growth stocks with no dividends. Say Otto bought stocks and they go up in value. Those are unrealized gains and there are no tax implications at this point. If he decides to sell those shares in the future for a profit, that's when there is CGT implication. CGT just stands for capital gains tax implications. Now the amount of capital gains tax Otto has to pay depends on how long he has held those shares for and his income bracket. Now say Otto is an absolute beast and he makes $100,000 a year. His income bracket at 100,000 is 37%. Say Otto held on to those shares that he bought for longer than 12 months and when he sold it, he made a profit of $10,000. Because he held on to those stocks for longer than 12 months, he's eligible for a 50% CGT discount. So that means instead of paying tax on the $10,000 profit, he only has to pay taxes on 5,000 of that 10,000 profit that he made, which means the $5,000 will be taxed at 37%. And the tax liability at this point will be 37% times 5,000, which is approximately 1850. Now, if Otto held on to those shares for less than 12 months, he'll have to pay taxes on that entire $10,000. So in his income bracket of 37%, it'll be 10,000 times 37%, which is approximately $3,700 of taxes. Okay, what if Otto made a loss in his trade? If Otto sold his shares and lost $10,000 instead of gaining 10,000, that amount is carried forward and can only be used to offset current or future capital gains. Let me explain. If Otto made another $10,000 gain sometime in the future, that gain is offset by the previous loss of $10,000. So that means he won't have to pay any capital gains tax in that financial year because it's offset by his previous loss. And for your own information, capital losses are carried forward and can't be used to reduce your taxable income. It can only be used to offset your future capital gains. That's essentially it for capital gains tax. And you guessed it, one of the easiest way to reduce the amount of tax you have to pay is to simply just hold them over the long term, longer than 12 months, so you're eligible for the capital gains tax discount. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, every situation is different, and if selling it in the short term, you have a bigger gain than holding it over the long term, then hey, you know your situation best. Now, if your situation is a little bit more complicated than that, make sure you invest in a good tax accountant because seriously, you sleep much better at night. One last thing, if you're wondering whether brokerage fees are deductible, it's not. You include the brokerage fee in the purchase price when you calculate your capital gains. That's it. Okay, let's move on to franking credits. And before we talk about that, if you have any form of dividend income, you need to include that in your taxable income because it's another source of income. And when it comes to franking credits, the easiest way to understand this is companies paying the dividend have already paid tax on the amount that you are going to get. And 
they have chosen to pass on the tax they paid to you as a tax credit. So what that really means is that franking credits will ultimately reduce your taxable income. As simple as that. And the good thing is, when you're doing your tax return, the ATO actually pre-fills some of the dividend income and also franking credit information into your tax return. That also includes reinvested dividends if you do choose to opt into reinvested dividends. But majority of the time, I find that ATO doesn't include all my franking credits and dividend income. So you might have to go through the letters companies send you when they distribute dividends or go to their share registry to get all your statements just to double check that you got everything in the tax return. Now, if you're wondering how to find your share registry, you just have to Google the stock plus share registry. When you buy the stocks, you should have signed up an account with them already and that will track all your physical letters coming from that company. So let's do a tangible example of franking credits just so that I can show you how it will impact your tax return. So here's a hypothetical example I created to help you better understand franking credits. So let's assume we have $50,000 worth of salary for last financial year. $7,250 worth of dividends and $2,750 worth of franking credits. Now, if we add all of this together, our total taxable income for last financial year is $60,000. If you can be bothered, you can use this table to calculate your tax liability on the $60,000. If you can't be bothered, ATR has a simple tax calculator that you can just put in the number and it will tell you the total amount of tax you have to pay on that taxable income without any deductions. Now, once we get that number, I'm not going to talk too much about the medical levy and the tax offsets. What's really important is if we look at the franking credits row, it's a minus. So what that essentially means is that it reduces the amount of tax you have to pay because ultimately companies have already paid tax on that dividend income they're paying you. So those tax credits will reduce the amount of tax you have to pay. And at the end of that calculation, that $8,317 is ultimately what you will owe to the ATO. Okay, so let's talk about investing in US stocks if you're Australian. Now for your information, all of my US investing activities is all done via stake. Now when it comes to receiving any form of income from the US, whether if it's capital gains or dividend income, there's a US tax form called WA Ben. Or oh, in my little world, I call it weight Ben. <laughs> oh, so bad. Basically, if you don't fill in that form and don't have a valid W8, it means that whoever you're trading with is obligated to withhold 30% of both your capital gains or dividend income and remit that money back to the RRS, which is really the US version of our ATO. But if you fill in that form and you have a valid W8, it means that you don't have to pay any capital gains tax to the US, just the capital gains tax we talked about earlier in the video. As long as this is valid, the brokerage you are investing or trading with don't have to withhold 30% tax on either your capital gains or dividend income. At the same time, dividend payments are subjected to a 15% tax to the US government, but the tax withheld on that amount can be used as a foreign tax credit. ATO does have a calculation example and I'll leave a link in the description box below. Again, if your situation is complicated, make sure you talk to a tax accountant because seriously, they are super helpful. Now, fortunately for me, Stake submits a W-8 form as part of my onboarding process when I signed up with them. I am not sponsored by them. I just do a lot of my US investing activity by them because this is so much easier to use. And if you want to try Stake for yourself and wouldn't mind getting a Dropbox, GoPro or Nike, I'll leave my referral link in the description box below as well. That's essentially it on taxes on the investing side. So let's wrap up the video talking a little bit about deductions for your personal tax returns. Now, the thing you need to know when it comes to deductions is that it's not free money. It, you still have to spend money and majority of the time you don't get the full amount back. It's just whatever portion you are using that equipment for work. And topic of the year, as soon as 30th of June has finished is the work from home deduction. There is basically two methods to claim work from home expenses. There is the shortcut method essentially where you claim 80 cents per hour for every hour you work at home. But that only applies to 1st of March to 30th of June, 2020. The good thing about this method is that it's easy to use. It's simple. And personally for me, I just don't have the time and energy to calculate the exact portion of 
all our electricity bills using it for work. But this shortcut method is only temporary and it's only available from 1st of March 2020 to 30th of June 2020. But if you're really organized and you can be bothered, you can calculate the exact amount of resources you use at home for work purposes and claim 52 cents per hour. But for this method, you do have to be meticulous when it comes to record keeping. And I'll leave a link in the description box below if you want to read in detail what ATO says you have to do when it comes to that method. Now, for the rest of my personal tax deductions, what I usually like to do is for thoroughness reasons, I will come to the ATO website and I will go through all of the different deductions you can claim on this tab right here just to make sure that I have everything covered. So there's plenty of things for you to go through. I'll leave a link in the description box below for anyone who's interested. That's essentially it for this video. I'll save my portfolio update for another week because I'm doing a bit of spring clean at the moment and I'm about to invest the July portion of my capital. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you subscribe to my channel, click onto the bell. When that video is ready, you'll be the first one to know. As usual, if you want to support me, just gently smash that like button and that's more than enough to support me. Until next time, my name is David and Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.